Hi, I'm Ted. In this build, we're going to do a chicken coop, a portable one. I've done some chicken coops before, but never a chicken tracker, which is what a lot of folks call them. For this one, we're going to use some pretty basic tools. Just going to need a drill. I've got two of them, one with a bit to pre-drill. The other one's going to have this number two bit that we're going to use for this square head drive screw. It's just a normal big screw. Hammer nails, basic hinges and stuff. We got a roll of chicken wire and a roll of welded fence. Some two by twos for the frame. And I've got a few pieces of uh, plywood, some scrap laying around I'll probably be using also. It's going to be about seven feet long and maybe four feet wide. We're going to make an A frame and fairly easy to put together, I hope. So let's find out. Let's do it. Before we lay the floor out, I'm going to put some marks on it. It's going to be seven feet long, and these are eight feet. But I want a little mark for one foot because I want to have a little bit of overhang. We're going to use that to something to help attach the wheels to later on. And then I'm going to cut out the pieces that go in between these. And then it depends how wide you want to make it. This one's going to be about four feet. We're using two by twos which are actually an inch and a half wide. I need to cut the middle piece. All I'm going to do here is subtract three inches from four feet because I want to have an overall width of four feet. So they'll both be 45 on the inside. I like to use an oversized speed spray to help me get it right. I'm just going to line these marks up with the marks we've made right here. If you pre-drill the hole, Less chance of splitting wood usually comes out nicer. It makes it a lot easier to put the screw in. Now, for the ends, we're going to just put it flush. Keep square to get it real close. We can double check for squareness by cross hatching. Cross hatching is simply measuring diagonally from corner to corner until you have equal measurements. And they're both 93 right on the money. Okay, now we're going to get some reference points here. I'm just going to find the center. And we're going to use this to help us lay out these little A frame trusses that we'll make up real quick. It's basically what they are. We'll bring it down to about 45 on each side so we know it's even. I'll be making some 45 pieces to strengthen up the floor frame. Turn it over. And we'll make a series of four of these. Screw them into the corner to strengthen it up. And now is where the welded wire fence comes in. Make a little basic eight frame structure. I have one on each end and one out here in the middle. So basically I'm just Measuring out to the center point, which in this case is 48 and an eighth inch. And then I'm going to take my speed square. This is the center point, and I'm going to make my 60 degrees hang right in the middle of that center point.
need two more of these. We'll use this one as a template. Lining it up with these marks here. In the factory bottom. Just make sure it doesn't move until you're done marking it. Now before we go too much further, we're going to turn this over. other pieces that are going in the bottom. See they're 45 inches just like the middle pieces. And now with this door I'm just going to make this one 16 inches wide. 12 inches high. three foot piece of metal I'm going to be covering the back half with. The rest of this will be all chicken wire so it can be outside. So I'm going to make this truss three feet in from the inside. And we'll set a board inside here. center point.
this truss, which I believe is 60 degrees. Okay, now we're gonna make the little sliding door or guillotine door. And all I've done here is screwed on a piece of two by two scrap that I had laying around. I've screwed a knife hook into it. We're gonna tie some of this nylon rope around the eye hook and make a couple of tracks for it to sit in. The tracks are really simple. I've got some three quarter inch plywood here and we're just gonna take some of this scrap wood laying around. I've made some marks in the center. We're just gonna center them over here so it's even. Then we're gonna screw them together and put them next to the door entrance and this will give it a track to slide up and down on. It's really kind of simple. Gonna free drill them, get them ready, and I'll install them. I've made some marks in the center of the small board. I'm just gonna line those marks up on each end here. And that's gonna give us a little channel. When we screw this to the wall, the door will slide in behind it. Line my mark up right up to the edge. I'm using these shorter deck screws for this so they don't pop out on the other side. Get the screw started. Then we'll screw them in after they're all free drilled. Alright, I'm just going to place this over the hole. Tight. As a matter of fact, you don't want it too tight. And this one will go on this side. I'll make sure it's not too tight, that it's moving smoothly and freely. block here and this is going to keep, keep us from coming up too high but it's also going to be a guide for the string. I've got a hole drilled through the axis and what we're going to do is position this up here so that it'll stop at our maximum height. That way we're going to give the birds the full amount of clearance. And it seems to be right about where it's sticking in, so that's good. But I'm going to let it stick here just long enough to screw this in, positioning the hole over the eye screw. Then I'm probably going to unscrew this and move it over so, it's, so it loosens it up again. The last thing we want to do is have it tighten and stick in here. piece that's 33 inches. It'll fit right in between there. We're going to screw it up here in between these two and it'll give us something to hang our pulley on for opening and closing the door from the outside. We're going to mount the pulley, screw it up into here. pretty close to this hole, so let's put it right about there. We'll make a mark where it's going to go, and of course, we drill it. Through the hole. I've got a little knot 
right here so it doesn't slip in. And I'm just going to tie a little loop around it right behind this knot. Fits right in there. And when you want to let them go, we'll hang the loop on it also. And now they're safe and warm for the night. I'm going to get some one foot marks down here. From the top. You do the same thing on the other side. Working alone, sometimes it's handy to have a little set screw. Just going to put one down here on the end. bottom piece on. First we're going to put a little 31 and a half degree angle on it so it's going to be the same angle and the metal won't hit it. coming over from the bottom frame and detach a 2x4 on it. So I'm going to take a 2x6 and just extend it up a little bit. The way these wheels sit, it's going to end up being right in the center. We're going to put a mark at 2.5 inches and just line it up and screw it in. This is the one for the other side. We're going to find our 2.5 inch mark. So we know how to line it up. I've already pre drilled some holes in it. The protruding part facing the wood, so it might give me a little distance. And I'm going to put another washer in here. Yeah, and it gives us a little bit of space between there. Put a washer on the wood side. So it seems like it works pretty good. What I like about this design is you don't have to do anything to the wheels in order for it to work. When it's normally sitting there, it's going to be nice and level and flush with the ground. The wheels will be flush with the ground. You don't have to really do anything to move it or to get it ready to move other than pick it up and push or pull. sitting on and this is going to give it a nice inch and a half spacing between the ground. You definitely don't want this sitting on the ground. And if you're making a chicken track and it's going to move, we want to keep this up at least an inch and a half off the ground.
put this little piece of wood, I've cut the curvy two and a half degree angle on it. I'm just going to pick up this string and keep it uh, away from the chickens. I've already pre-drilled some holes here. Now I'm using one on each side down here on the bottom. These runs you can put one next to each rib and one on the leading edge. And I've scrounged up some 90 degree corner trim. It's not really made for rich cat, but on this little building it will work. For this door, we're putting a trim on the outside. This is the big one that's going to be in the back there, in the enclosure part, and it's going to be like a ramp. And when it comes down, it'll land on this pressure-treated wood that we're going to have all around framing it. Let's turn it over, make sure it's lined up, and screw it down. And this bottom piece, we're going to put little hinges on it. It's going to just come right down and give it a little ramp. And on this side, I'm going to let this hang over. This is going to actually be the top on the other side. And I've cut some other pieces here. We're going to let them hang over as well. And this is going to, have to give it a little additional strength. If something wants to try to get in there, we'll just pull it in tight. style just like the other one and like the other one the dimensions of this will be wider than the hole itself and it'll be mounted on the outside so that the animals or any animals trying to get in won't be able to push it in easily first we'll pre-drill it we'll screw this together cover it with some chicken wire and mount it chicken wire door. I've got the hinges mounted right on the threshold. We'll get a little ramp angle. I've also put a little trim above it and I'll mount the barrel bolt to that. We pre-drilled the screws holes already.
thing works real good in the shop here on this concrete. It's time to take it out and put it in the sand. Let's see if it works out there as well. Thank you.